Welcome to Clunkers and Classics. Uh, I already filmed the test drive on the uh, El Camino. That's coming up. But I had to put this in first. A sponsor sent me another light. It's the same sponsor that sent me that light over there we put in a while back. Cenoton. Um, link in the description. Not exactly sure how much this is. They just said we had another light to send you, send you, and this is what they sent me. Okay, it's a 60 watt outdoor LED canopy light, waterproof, commercial. Okay, so well packed. This is the light here. Uh, try to figure it out. I guess this is the mounting plate, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. Hang it up. Something like that. Anyway. Figured out. I think I'll put it inside the shop. I already have an outside light. Right there, uh, it's pretty pretty bright, and it comes on when the sun goes down. So what it, I forget what you call it now, but uh, sensor in there. Now, it's been up there for years. It works good, and <laughs> I had to kind of rig that pole. But anyway, if I didn't have that one, I'd put it outside. Uh, that's mainly for working when it gets a little dark. I put a car underneath here, and I can see better. And keep these cats out of here so uh, for now I think I'm gonna put it in the shop so what we got started with four fluorescent lights two of them crapped out years ago then these ones crapped out got ballast resistors for them uh, they worked but those ones don't the ballast resistors are discontinued can't get them ended up buying another light over here Sponsor sent me this light. I had to rig up a base for it. We had a pickets uh, wood pickets Got that up there. It's where I paint uh, Then the sponsor sent me this light <coughs> So this new light uh, Probably put it right in here somewhere um, I don't work in the garage that much I see 90% of the time I'm outside so yeah we can probably put it more in the middle over here somewhere i'll figure it out and then we can change it up later put it somewhere else uh or i could put it up in this corner here but anyway let me uh let me get started with it instructions and everything are here uh it mentions i don't know if this is the ceiling Okay, yeah, you take off this plate here. Is that the... You mount this plate to the ceiling. And then you clip that in somehow. Okay. Yeah, hook this end on first. Okay, well, I don't have a flat spot though. Uh, well, I'll probably have to make a base. I got a whole bunch of wood. Got some wood here. Make a little bit of a base for it. And uh, hook it up somewhere and uh, see how it works. And then... Uh, then we'll get on with the video for the uh, El Camino test drive and go over it and all that stuff. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys, there it is. I put it right in the middle. It's pretty bright. Put these ones on. I got to rewire everything instead of uh, these extension cords and stuff on. 
But uh, yeah, it lights up the whole middle pretty good. That's just temporary. Uh, I may put it somewhere else. May put it way up here. I'm gonna. I'm starting to clean out this area here. I just moved a whole bunch of boxes, and uh, anyway, try to clean it up a little bit. But yeah, or I can move it outside later on for another outside light. Maybe underneath the carport. One of the carports or something like that since it's waterproof and everything. But anyway, that's the light, guys. Check them out. Link in the description. Now we'll get on with the uh, test drive of the El Camino. And it's finished up. So uh, we'll see you next clip. Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics. In our last episode, we got all the uh, Super Sport decals on there. Put a little pinstripe along the top. Um, and now we're going to take it for a test drive and see if there's anything wrong with it driving wise. Um, got the music playing here in the garage, so I uh, don't want to get a copyright. So, uh, yeah, let me, uh, it's pretty dusty and dirty and lots of cat prints on it, but, okay, uh, I'll be back, we'll be on the road. Okay, guys, we're on the road. First time on the road in about 20 years. Oh, so, uh, well, it says we're doing 50, but I think speedometer works, but I think it's off. the engine and transmission from that 77 Malibu so speed her up a little bit yeah I think it's off about 10 miles an hour but anyway so far so good front end feels nice now the steering wheel is going to be off because that's the only way it lines up for the little horn button thing and uh, anyway, there ain't much I can do about it. Got some wind noise from that new weather stripping. Was over the tracks pretty good. I uh, changed phones a while back, so I don't have the uh, GPS app on my phone for the speedometer. See how fast you're going. I, I meant to download another one, another free one, just to see how far it's off, but... exhaust and whatever mufflers they are sound pretty good not gonna do no burnouts like the black one because I got new tires on this so I got new tires on the black one too but before I got the new tires I did a big old smoky burnout in it uh, I will put the clip of the 77 Malibu um, when I took it for a test drive before I pulled the engine. Got a burn out on it. So I'll put that clip in after after this. I think I had a little Greta clip at the end there. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, this is a park to the lake. Dead ends. The brakes seem okay. Uh... But I know they have to be, let's go through here, miss the mud. They would have to be needing to be bled because I put a new master cylinder on it. 
but like I said before, I couldn't get to them. Those back bleeder. That wasn't completely floored. It's got a stiff uh, return spring on the carburetor. Anyway, it's around good enough. It's not no powerhouse. Just a 305 with the four barrel headers. Man, she drives good though. Should probably take it on the highway. I'll get it up to speed up here. Yeah, the only thing it probably would need is the wheels balanced. Since I got new tires on there, I put them on myself. Same with the black one, I put new tires on it. You can feel a little vibration at highway speeds, but balancing the, the wheels will fix that. Yeah, the dash needs some more work, but I'm just gonna leave the dash like that for now. Um, in case it breaks out again. So I used truck bed coating before I painted it to give it some texture and it bubbled out. I fixed it a little bit last video, but uh, we'll leave it like that, see what happens. It looks better than it did. It was all cracked up real bad. I just fixed it for next to nothing. She drives pretty good. I'm happy with it. Okay, I'll be back. Hole in the old, and the trunk man is letting it all in here. <coughs> but actually, it sounded like it. Well, there's still. How dare you! Okay, guys, I'm on the highway. Hope there ain't no wind noise, but uh, it's too hot to have the windows up. That's another thing too that uh, I never did to it was all the AC stuff is on there. It's all hooked up, but I don't know if any of it works. Uh, have to evacuate and charge it up and see, but I'm not about to do that. Like I said, I'm not going to be driving it a daily driver or nothing. So yeah, we're going across Lake Texoma here. Uh, there's a nice park up here on the left. And according to the news the other day, they're building a hard rock casino over there. Uh, it's going to take about two years and employ 9,000 people or something, six or 9,000 people. 
something crazy. Three stories. Uh, but anyway, we'll drive into the park and uh, see if they started construction or got any signs. Or I'm pretty sure I know where it's at, where they're going to build it. Yeah, this area, this park we're going to used to be really big from what I heard back in like in the 80s and stuff, maybe 90s. A guy that lived here all his life was telling me. And then it got run down or something because of uh, it being sold and then the place went bankrupt and got sold again and nobody ever did anything to it for decades it was kind of maintained but like the grass cut and all that but uh anyway there was a bunch of places along this highway like motels and places to eat and enter attractive roadside attractive things that are all been abandoned and closed down because of the Everybody used to come out here forever, and uh, all of a sudden, see this is where I, I think they were going to build it because they built something there that was empty, and I'm not sure what that is. Might be the offices or or something. But now this on the right's new. Oh, it is a casino. West Bay Casino. Okay. West Bay Cabins. Yeah, that's new. So the Hard Rock ca uh, Casino is supposed to be in here somewhere. So I guess somebody finally did something with this property. It was just, you used to call it Chernobyl because there was a whole bunch of cabins down here forever and they were been abandoned for decades oh shit what the hell that was and uh they finally tore them down about a year or so ago Nobody ever came out here after the heyday wore off, uh, except for like Labor Day, Memorial Day. It used to get pretty crowded, but other than that, it was just dead out here. But there's camping and all kinds of stuff, a bunch of campsites around. Yeah, the cabins were all in here, but they finally tore it down. Yeah, there's campsites in here too. This was my favorite spot to go to here is a cliff. See, park and pay upon arrival. There's a big cliff right there. Me and Puppy used to go there. We got not very crowded in February. bathrooms out here just old <laughs> yeah there's just nobody out here <coughs> everything will be green in about a month I guess middle of February now and there's a marina down there a lot of boats Yeah, mostly people come out here Memorial Day and stuff to uh, picnic and all that. But regular weekends aren't even that busy. So maybe this new casino will bring in a lot more people, I don't know.
but I used to like coming out here when there was nobody here like this. Come out here one time, sat over here, and one other guy was here, me and him were bullshitting. And puppy, you know, I never have her on the leash. She was just sitting over there with us, and this woman comes up in a park ranger. Now your dog needs to be on a leash. And I look around, just like this. And I says, what? But there's nobody around. Oh, well, that, that's park rules. You gotta have a dog on a leash. And I was like, Tch. argue with her for a bit. So stupid. Nobody around. Puppy wouldn't bite anybody anyway, but she don't know that, but. Yeah, how, how are you supposed to take your dog to the lake with a leash on it for it to go swimming and stuff? Because that's a puppy just love the water. Just love that water. She had so much energy when she was younger. This is our spot here. I'll show you the uh, cliff. Yeah, she's running good. So, in her younger days there, she loved chasing tennis balls. You see how far down this is? Here, to the water. I'd get a tennis ball and throw it far as I could way out there. And she'd run all the way down, swim all the way out to the tennis ball, bring it back all the way up again uh, at least 10 <laughs> 15 times in a row before she'd get tired so I used to come out here and let her do that because wear off her energy but I can't do that with uh, with uh, Nikki because that's the only thing I worry about she don't she don't get enough exercise she really don't seem like she wants to keep running around or nothing. She's really cautious because she's blind. Anyway, yeah, she looks good. Well, anyway, guys, uh, I'll be back later. I'm going to take some pictures and stuff. Okay, guys. Yeah, I'll have to find out where they're building that casino at. Maybe that wasn't, you know, I think there was just another building there. I don't remember it being a casino. I hadn't been out here in a, in a little while. Not years or nothing, but maybe it was there and I just never paid attention to it because it looked like the other building. But yeah, uh, I just can't see them having two casinos. Okay, so that, yeah, that's supposed to be managed by the state, that park. And then, according to a law, I remember looking it up years ago, and if the state sold the park like that, they would have to make another one double its size. <laughs> so I, was, I don't know where the new park is that's double that size, but anyway. address had a question um, when I when I made the video of what it cost to build this which was 5200 um, might have been one or two questions but it, somebody asked me that in the past of uh, oh why don't you uh, include your labor tell what was your labor so I'm not exactly sure what they meant by how many hours it took. I don't I don't keep track. You know, lucky to keep track of all the money I spent in it, never mind the hours. An hour here, two hours there. Shit. 
it. I, there's no way I'd be able to keep track of that or want to. Uh, or if they meant how much money would I make per hour of working on the car when I sold it. Well, that's the thing. You don't know how much you're going to make till you sell it. So, uh, but you know, you just got an idea that like this one, I think it's probably worth 15 grand. Uh, just because it's not as desirable or worth as much as an older one, say, you know, 68 to 72 might be worth 20 grand. This one might be 15. If it was plain Jane one, it wouldn't even be worth, might be worth 10 or 8. So anyway, uh, figure if I ever sold it or whatever, what it's worth is like 10, I'd make 10 grand. And you would just divide that by your hours. Now you gotta figure, guys, guys most 99% of these people on YouTube lose their ass. They sell their car for way less than they paid for it. And a lot of them do it, or they put more money into it than it's worth, even if they kept it because they're the big guys, they're not even big guys, just medium guys on YouTube. They're making money off YouTube, so they don't care. I do, I don't care what I'd make on YouTube. <coughs> so you gotta figure that. Most of these guys aren't making a penny, they're losing. Uh, so anyway, you know, I show you how to, how to, uh, make money on a car. Now, yeah, I figured, I don't do this for a living. And if I did, I'd probably just do old Camaro, Nova Chevelles like that, that are worth, you know, 25 grand or something when, when it's done, instead of 15. But I do it more like a hobby. I enjoy it. I like doing it. And, uh, just fun. If it, if it wasn't, I wouldn't be doing it. Or, or I wouldn't be restoring it because I bought this for $15.50. I'd spend a day getting it running and uh, just sell it for $2,500, make a quick grand. But the, but the problem is, you can't find a deal like this every day or even a week once a week go out and buy a car like this and make a quick grand off of it. Well, you know, it's hard to do. And they're not finding a good deal is hard to begin with. But yeah, that would be... <coughs> but I wouldn't want that. I want to fix it up the way it is now. And either keep it or whatever. So that's where I'm at on it. I just enjoy doing it. Uh, some cars I'll make money, some cars I may make $20 an hour when it's all done, some cars I'm, someday, some I might make 40 or 50 an hour, never know, but I don't care, and the longer I keep it, the more the value goes up, so that's why I'm in no rush of selling, the, selling any of my cars, you know, so, anyway, I'll be back. Okay guys, made it back no problem. Running cool as a cucumber. And uh, yeah, see here's all the AC. It's all hooked up, even the ground wire, power wire, but, and it's not, it's not froze up. So it may just take a charge and work, but <laughs> I'm not about to do it. I think I'm done with it guys. I thought maybe there would be something during that test drive that needed to be addressed, but uh, no, man, that's, she drives great. Drives really good. So yeah, front end's good. No, always worry about front end stuff, but if it don't need anything, I'm not going to replace it. The only car I did that to was the the Nomad Wagon because I did the disc, disc brake conversion so I just went ahead and did all the tubular you know spent over a thousand dollars on all the 
disc brakes, tubular A arms and everything and because I was going to take it, I did take it on Hot Rod Power Tour, take it again this year, so I wanted everything to be good. Uh, most of these cars, I just leave the front end the way they are. If they don't need anything, you know, if they need bushings and stuff, then I'll dress it. But uh, this one was good. The uh, the other uh, black one was good. So lucked out. Drives really good. No shaking, no vibrations, no nothing. So anyway, guys, I think that's it for it. I just hate to... Uh, <laughs> hate to park it and let it sit but like I said uh, uh, you know they're just worth more and more every year so I'm in no rush of selling it not desperate to sell it don't need the money so uh, it'll just sit around here and I got two of them I tagged the uh, I got some dust on my new taillights uh, I'll be driving the black one over here. That's the one that's tagged and insured. I took the tags and the insurance paper, put it in, put it in there, test drive it. As long as a cop don't know the difference between a 78 and an 82. But yeah, uh, I'll be driving this one every now and then. Um, Nikki likes going for rides now. She'll go, if I say you want to go for a ride in the car, she'll outside and right in the into the car she just uh, i don't even have to guide her anymore but i usually take that ford fusion little run around car like this morning did some errands and out for breakfast into walmart open the back door she hops right in she just sits there just perfect she just loves going for rides but i couldn't take her in this because uh, she needs a back seat right nikki nikki like going for rides don't you Think you like going for a ride in a car? Such a good girl. I think all German Shepherds love going for rides in cars. Probably all dogs, but... Anyway, uh... So usually, you know, just like puppies, go everywhere with me. Puppy could sit in the front seat, okay. But Nikki's not going to be able to. She's blind. She needs a place to kind of lay out. She lays out in the back seat with her head up, but... So anyway, I can't take her for rides in the El Caminos because we're only, you know, two seaters or two front seat. Uh, but I've been driving, driving the Avalanche, my black truck, of course the Fusion. Uh, but yeah, she wouldn't be able to drive in the Corvette. Okay, so anyway, guys, I think that's about it. Um, I wanted to put... I got another light from a sponsor, but I think I'll put it in the front of the video, so you've probably already seen it. But yeah, if you're interested in, in a shop light, you can check out their website. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Yeah, very surprised she drove good and everything. First time in, since 2004, <laughs> at least. Some people park them and keep tagging them every year and never drive them. So anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to park her underneath the carport over there. It's a shame that <laughs> that uh, let the cats run all over it now. But that's okay. Okay, so the next uh, project, which I should probably start on maybe today, it's getting late in the day but uh definitely tomorrow it's spring now so it's good weather every day as long as it ain't raining uh we're gonna get get uh, going on this got the chin leak power steering leak and then once that's fixed uh we're gonna swap the bed over from the parts truck over there and then start on the bodywork. Probably the cab corners do that while the bed's off. And then just, I don't think there's much dents on it. There's a lot of dents on the other bed. But the other bed is not rusty like this one. We'll go over that on the next video for this truck. But yeah, it'll be lots of sanding. And uh, we'll fix all the dents and dings and paint her up two-tone again. 
get her all get her all looking good we don't uh, drive patina stuff around here or you know it's it's not a bad looking patina but it's got to be shiny it's got to look like that two-tone dressed up stripes new chrome side moldings which i got everything make her look sharp making her a real going to town rig as vice grip would say of course he never fixes them up as going to town rigs well some of me does but most of me just gets running good and either put some clear coat or something on it but anyway uh yeah that's a nice going to town rig there wouldn't be be very proud to take that into town okay so i think that's it guys subscribe if you haven't bottom right hand corner of the screen it's free doesn't cost anything like share comment i'm supposed to help with the algorithms and we're done we're done so got the truck if i get bored with that doing it it's going to be a lot of body work a lot of sanding two-tone paint got to wait in between coats it's going to be a lot of that so i might stop in the middle of it got a whole bunch of parts for this for the i rock 85 i rock so that is coming up too uh yeah silverado r rock and then arts well my car it used to be arts 77 malibu the black one i'm gonna get that one i get one of these finished before i start on that car so anyway i think that's it guys tell me what y'all think and uh we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching